RxJS has done a lot of work in Angular apps since 2016, but that's about to change now that the Angular team has released Signals. Signals are going to take a lot of the workload off of RxJS. But why shouldn't we use RxJS for everything? It turns out RxJS is really good at some things and really bad at other things. So let's take an example of a counter, and what we'll do is uh, we'll use the a variation of the subject and a service pattern, and so we'll have a count dollar equal to a behavior subject, and we'll have an increment method so that our components can increment the count. And now we have two components sharing that state and incrementing the same state. So that's pretty cool. So let's make it more complicated. Let's have some derived states. And this is a little complicated, so I'm just going to show you the diagram. We have count dollar at the top, then we have double and triple, each deriving from that, and then combined, which is a combined latest that adds double and triple together, and we have over 9,000, which is a, a Boolean that returns true if combined is over 9,000. And then we have message, which displays a message, displays a message depending on what the over 9,000 Boolean returns. All right, and here's what that looks like. That was easy, right? There probably aren't any problems with that, right? Right? Actually, let's just check. So let's put a console log inside the message observable. And how many times do you think this is going to uh, log? Because we're just incrementing count once, and there's just should be there should just be one <laughs> there should just be one calculation that's done for this. But instead, we actually see four console logs. So there's something mysterious happening in this observable chain. What could it be? Uh, let's add a console log to all of these. And that's five. So how many console logs should we expect to see when count updates just once? We already know we're seeing at least three extra from a uh, message. Uh, so from all five of these, what would you expect? Well, turns out it's 40. We see 40 console logs when we update count once. So it's time to understand RxJS a bit better. Um, here is a diagram I made of what's happening. Component one, each, each of these green lines is a subscription, a subscription coming from component one, and each of the blue lines is a subscription coming from component two. If you count all the lines together, that's, well, that's uh, six coming from each, but um, we're seeing more than 12 console logs. So actually what happens is each of these lines causes each of these computations to run uh, like a brand new time. So if you count the lines next to double, we have four from component one and four from component two. But actually, if you count all the lines like that, um, you don't get 40, you get uh, quite a bit less, something like 36, where the extra one's coming from. It's actually the combined latest. So the combined latest is going to fire one time for each input that changed. So it's not just firing once, it's firing twice, but then it's doing that for each of its subscribers, which means message actually gets computed four times and over 9,000 gets computed eight times, double what we'd expect just by looking at these lines and eight times more than what we want. So how do we prevent this, this madness? What we want is operators. So we're already using map, but we need distinct until change, so it doesn't recompute if the value didn't change. And sometimes when you're doing this, you need, in, you need a comparator uh, for like uh, arrays that change, or that, that don't change, but just the reference changed, or, or specific objects, uh, like object properties. Um, and in addition to combined latest, you'll need to bounce debounce time to prevent the combined latest from em emitting multiple times. It'll still recompute extra times internally, but this at least helps it uh, not notify its own subscribers too many times. But actually, debounce time isn't that great. Uh, what you actually want is coalesce with. It's more performant. It's from Arcs Angular. You should download that. And then we need share replay so that multiple subscribers doesn't uh, don't cause the same calculation to uh, compute multiple times. But actually there's a problem with share replay. So what we want is publish replay and ref count. But actually there's a problem with those too. 
So what we really want is merge, never, share, and replay subject. And we can wrap those in a custom operator so we don't always repeat those. Um, and I'll explain more about this later. But basically this is what you need, all of these operators. Let's take a step back for a second. We're gonna ask everybody to learn all these operators. Not only that, but it's confusing why they're needed. And a lot of people don't even know they need these things because they haven't run into the pitfalls that that cause you to learn the lessons of why these things are problematic on the top, like share replay, publish replay, ref count. So this is a really terrible experience. And even if you learned all of it, it still sucks because they're going to be all over in your code. You're going to have basically a, a custom operator that you create that you put at the end of every single observable. And, uh, and then it's still not going to be as performant as it could be because all these operators are doing actual work and they're actually adding to your bundle size. So it's best to not use ArxJS for synchronous reactivity. Instead, use it for what it's actually really good at, asynchronous reactivity. And we need something else for synchronous reactivity. How about selectors? Selectors are pretty efficient at computing derived states. I never really liked their, their syntax though. It's kind of verbose. So when I created state adapt, I created uh, my own syntax here. And I like this better, but selectors still have an issue. And, and the issue is that it requires a global store and a state management library. And it's basically impossible to integrate selectors into your framework's API, for example, component inputs. Angular needed a reactive primitive of its own. And out of all the options, signals were the best. Let's re-implement the shared count in signals. So this is what it is. And we just have a signal and computed. And what happens if we put logs in all of these? Well, it only logs five times. That was easy, right? That was really easy. And it was efficient, out of the box. We didn't have to do anything special. It just worked. And we only needed to know one operator. Signals are really good at synchronous reactivity. The Angular team implemented them with a very sophisticated algorithm for uh, maximizing efficiency. They use version numbers for values, and they, they basically they took the, the problem of synchronization and they designed an algorithm that worked perfectly for synchronization. So yeah, they did a really great job, and I, I, yeah, I love using signals. Signals are awesome. It's, it's awesome no, using something and knowing it's just super efficient out of the box. If you want to learn more about how the algorithm works, I recommend this video where uh, the Angular team, um, Paola and Alex, talked to Ryan Carniato. Um, yeah, you could you, you could search it and easily find it. And and they have timestamps so you can find the place where they go into the details. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll learn a lot if you watch this. However, just as RxJS is not perfect, signals are not perfect. There are two limitations, and I will be going over those in my next videos, which I will be publishing very soon. Uh, the first is asynchronous reactivity. Um, RxJS isn't bad at everything. It's good at asynchronous reactivity, and signals aren't good at everything. They are good at synchronous, but not asynchronous reactivity generally. So that will be the next video I publish. And then the other issue is that signals always want current state. Uh, so if as soon as a signal exists, it's going to hold on to state even before it's needed by any consumer. And it also holds on to state after it's needed by any consumers. Whereas RxJS is lazy, it waits for subscribers, but it's also fresh. So when you unsubscribe, it will either cancel or reset. So I'll be going over the, those in the next videos, as well as uh, after that, I will be talking about how signals could overcome both of these problems. I've come up with ways that might actually work. So I'll talk about those hopefully really soon. So yeah, stay tuned.